Hello everyone. Um, I haven't done a video for a while. I was uh, planning on setting up a nice uh, fancy little bench and uh, so I could uh, work on the projects a little bit easier and stuff. And that required me uh, um, rearranging the garage and unfortunately I had some stuff stacked in front of the garage door. We don't really use it for to store automobiles. And I had stuff stacked in front of it. From the outside, the garage door looked fine, but you can't really see it uh, in this video real well. But uh, found out that uh, the garage door has a lot of dry rot in it uh, when I moved stuff out from in front of it. So contacted the garage uh, door um, repairman and uh, ordered a new garage door. But this time of the year, they're busy, so it's going to be another three probably three weeks before they get here so I've got some uh, projects stacked up so I'm gonna have to go ahead and do it and you know, where I did it before uh, it's kind of cramped but uh, um, we'll get it done so that's why I haven't posted any videos for a little while um, I was on uh, the antiqueradio.com forums and there's a gentleman that was a uh, requesting somebody to do some uh, restorations on a uh, Halicrafter's uh, S38 and an S40. No one else really responded to him, so I thought I'd uh, offer my services for better or for worse. Uh, so he sent them to me. There's a good story that we tell about this uh, as we go along, but um, not to criticize Arthur, but uh, just want to show you um, how not to pack these uh, radios to be sent this is how we got them um, we're take them we're take them out here and show you in a minute but uh, uh, at the end of the video at the end of the restoration I'll show you how to package these things to send properly package these things to send them so our uh, put these on the bench and show you what we had got and we'll start with the uh, s38 Okay, we've got the uh, S38 here. Um, obviously, the cords ready to be replaced. Um, we'll replace that with a polarized cord here. So um, I'll go ahead and remove the uh, shrink or the bubble wrap here, and we'll see what we have underneath it. Okay, we've got the uh, S38 out of the bubble wrap um, there's some pretty extensive rust up here it's not just surface well it's it's basically surface rust through the paint but I don't think uh, it's anything that I can touch up so we're probably gonna have to strip the cabinet and, re and either repaint it or powder coat it then it looks like there's a hole that was cut here so I have to attempt to weld a patch in there and redrill out those holes. Um, as far as the front's concerned, the dials and the uh, covers look like they're going to be okay. Um, the knobs are pretty much intact except for uh, this one down here. The aprons broke on it so we'll probably have to replace that one but I've got replacements for that already. Uh, all the switches are good, which is good. Um, on the S38, as opposed to S38Bs and Cs, um, the bottom cover is metal and it's here. Back cover is missing. Uh, we've got some rust around the speaker. I'm not real sure if that's, uh, I have to check on that, but uh, not real sure if that's standard. Um, it's been modified for a BNC antenna jack and a phone jack. I'll have to check with Arthur and see if he wants me to take those out, put it back, and then probably what we do. Since the chassis doesn't look too bad, I'm going to attempt to probably clean that up and repolish it. Um, if that's the case, I don't want to be welding on any of this, so probably just get some metal caps and fill those in. Serial number HA131388. Um, from this point of view, the only thing I can see so far is the rectifier tube here is loose in the base. So we'll go through and check all those. 
probably a good chance I'll have to replace that. But overall, um, we'll open the bottom of it here in a little bit after I show you the S40. S40. But unless I find something uh, um, really array in, the, uh, in bad shape underneath the chassis, this should be a fairly easy restoration here. Alright, I will uh, throw the S40 on the bench and we'll see uh, how that turns out here. Okay, I've got the S40 out of the bubble wrap. Um, the main uh, tuning uh, lens was laying in the bottom of the box. As you can see, I'm, I'm sure that happened in chipping. As you can see, the uh, dial is pretty much shot. Luckily, the dial and the, and the band spread we can get from uh, the new dials, we can get from uh, Radio Days. Uh, this, I have to, I, I thought, I, I think I found somebody that has a set of replacements for these. If not, um, I can probably remake, remanufacture that. All the die or all the knobs seem to be in good shape, so we're good there. Even has the silver painted ones. Um, we've got some surface rust here. Same situation as the other one or the S38. There's quite a bit of rust, so I think I'm gonna probably have to strip it um, and then repaint it. Uh, now, the one thing that I'm a little worried about is this IF can here was loose and rattling around in there so hopefully we didn't break any wires on that. The chassis seems to be in a little worse shape so I don't know if I'll be able to clean that up or if I'll have to strip that and paint it like I did the uh, S38B. You can see the transformer's got quite a bit of rust on it. We'll have to take a look at that. Hopefully that checks out alright. Appears that all the tubes are in it which is a good thing. Um, that uh, capacitor there does not look original. So that's probably been replaced. Other than that, it uh, it looks uh, salvageable. So, like I said, I'm going to set this aside. Try to collect a few parts for it. Or set that aside and we'll get started. Uh, or start tearing down the uh, S38 uh, next. Bottom cover is off. Um, for the most part it looks unmolested. I'm not sure that this uh, electrolytic cap is the original one. Or check on that or try to do something different. Um, well obviously we'll replace the electrolytics anyway but uh, try to get or either put a um, terminal strip there and do it that way or find another one to restuff and hang in there. It's got all the original paper ones, which obviously will have to be replaced. The only thing that for sure has been changed is a BNC connector for the antenna has been added here, and then a phono jack has been added for for these. I'm not even sure to, sure if that phono jack probably worked right. I I don't <clears throat> I'd have to look up and see what the impedance on, is on between this circuit and a standard set of headphones. I don't think that would probably work. Probably worked very well, but for the most part, it's pretty unmolested. Should be pretty straightforward as far as that's concerned. So, next step, we'll go ahead and uh, pull the chassis out of the case. We have the chassis out of the uh, case, and uh, I'm pretty confident I'm going to be able to clean this chassis up without having to re refinish it. So, what I do is our Strip everything off the top of it, including the IF cans and the audio transformer and the um, variable capacitor. I also take these off, and these these are electrically isolated from the uh, from the chassis with a rubber grommet in there, and it's riveted in. We'll take that out and replace those rivets because those grommets are pretty well shot, um, including. These grommets here need to be replaced also. So we'll do that. Um, and then when we take the cans off, I'll check them and for silver mica and probably have to replace that. Um, obviously, we'll take the tubes out and put them in my Hickok tester and test those. So, um, got a 
got a really good start on it so far. Uh, the needles and everything look fabulous. Uh, I have to do some touch-up painting on those. Um, the dial is good. I'll probably just do a little bit of light cleaning on that. So, got the case down here. We'll have to take that out and strip it. Uh, it appears whatever that cardboard was actually was meant to be there. You can see where there's that slot that it goes in. So we'll have to replace that in addition to patching that hole. But overall, the case is in fairly good shape except for that one hole, so it shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be too bad to do that and repaint it and reapply the decals. So I'll have Brad go out and do that. Um, when I take the speakers out on these, lots of times I like to just cut the wires and then uh, or either reuse those wires or put new wires in. When I do it, I put a splice in there so it's a little bit easier to get it out of the case instead of having to pull it out and um, unscrew the speaker to get the chassis out. The bottom's in okay shape, other than it needs to be refinished. Um, or try to, or I should be able to pop that label off. It looks like those um, should just pop out. So we'll have to see how we uh, recreate that label or if we do and the feet uh, might be able to be cleaned up or check I've heard that if you, dr you soak those in transmission fluid or, or brake fluid it'll I don't remember which I have to go look that up but lots of times they're uh, softened up but we'll check and either get them softened up or replace them the other thing I wanted to point out is I'm bagging and tagging everything. Um, the one thing that uh, might cause me a little problem, this one that's got the broken aprons on it, that was on the uh, CW pitch, and that shaft's a little bit smaller, so I'm going to have to, plus it's got uh, a little stop on there. So I'm either going to have to reproduce that somehow or um, find a replacement. So, we'll see what we can do on that yet. After about an hour's worth of work, we've got the uh, chassis, the top of the chassis all cleaned off. Removed the uh, IF cans here. We've got the variable capacitor here. We'll drop that in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner here. Took off these from the front. We'll clean those up. Took off the mounting brackets for the dial there. We'll go ahead and get those cleaned up also and reattached, but uh, next I'll go ahead and try to uh, get the chassis cleaned up. Hopefully we can get it as clean as that. Uh, normally what I do with that is we use some brass so get it all cleaned up. I'm pretty hopeful we'll be able to get this cleaned up and looking pretty good. Um, I'll go ahead and tape the, uh, the sockets off so we don't get any of the brass on it. Um, we'll have to replace these uh, rubber grommets here. Um, the other thing that I did is I also removed uh, the additional um, BNC connector for the antenna and the phono jack here. Clean that up and I'll probably just drop a couple metal plugs in there. Um, I'll try to uh, work around this and leave the original label on it. Um, other than that, uh, once we get that done, we'll go ahead and start recapping and putting it back together and and try to get the uh, electrical done here in the next day, or the electronic restoration done here in the next day or so. Uh, I believe that's about it. Uh, there's the audio transformer. I'll go ahead and check that out. And uh, on these ones on, the, uh, on this side, I'll probably rewire them. I do that with both of them. Huh, interesting. That's apparently not being used. So there, I don't know if that's the original. It looks like it looked like it was the original. It fit the whole mounting holes correctly and everything. So we're check that out. So I think I'm going to end the first video with this. Uh, Till next time, this is KB0SQ signing off.